dear students we are in the final part of the hydrocephalus topic hydrocephalus so we have gone through uh, uh, the surgical treatment therapy of choice which mode of treatment will be used and uh, okay now manage problems resulting from effects of disorder so psychodo so even though initially the challenge in front of the surgical team is to save the child because it is a uh, it can lead to fatality of the child so for, uh, even though the the aim is to save the child basically but also the uh, surgeons should will think about you know uh, other you know, problems in uh, in the what which may be faced by the child during the future so psychomotor development and uh, other kinds of milestone development will be affected so a role of physiotherapist starts even pre surgically that is pre operatively so direct removal of the source of the obstruction so the removing excision of the neoplasm cyst or hematoma uh, that is a clot is very very essential in in case if it is due to these causes most require shunt procedure to drain csf from ventricles to extra cranial area outside the cranial area so the csf has to be shunted out by a tube a tube will drain with which will consist of a valve will uh, you know control the removal of the excess csf uh, and then it will be shunted to either to the peritoneal cavity of the uh, uh, you know, abdomen or to the right atria right of the heart for absorption so here you can see this is a brain and inside you can see the yellow colored ventricle has been colored here in yellow and here you can see the blue tube that is the tubing of the abdomen going to the abdominal cord. this is the shunt so it has been inserted into the ventricle ventricle and then wall will control the uh, you know removal of uh, you know uh, the uh, amount amount of the uh, csf necessary amount of the csf to uh, peritoneal cavity so the cerebral spinal fluid will flow out excessive cerebral spinal fluid will flow out of the ventricles and through the uh, valve and through the tubing out to the abdominal cavity vp shunt or ventriculo peritoneal shunt used in neonates and young infants greater allowance for excess tubing which minimizes number of revisions needed as child grows as you all will already have been thinking because the child will grow in size the whole body will grow in size so revision surgery will be required in case of uh, vp shunt so uh, which so here uh, greater allowance of excess tube can be allowed you know the even though the child will grow the tube may allow some uh, stretching so this excess tubing to allow for growth is allowed in vp that is ventriculo uh, uh, peritoneal shunt so this is a very help it will avoid revision surgeries as it will be required in the ventriculo atrial sh uh, shunt so here you can see this is the ventricle of the child and the, this is the tube which is inserted the valve and then the you know apparatus which controls the XSC. and then the tube comes out here from here the it will be evident outside the neck uh, subcutaneous so, uh, uh, you know outside the thoracic cavity and then entering the abdominal cavity to the peritoneal cavity ventricular atrial shunt reserved for older children who have attained most of the somatic growth so older children will be requiring uh, ventricular atrial shunt or children with abdominal pathology if the child cannot uh, they have abdominal pathology along with hydrocephalus then the shunt cannot remove uh, the excessive fluid to the uh, abdominal cavity peritoneum so then it will be shunted to the right atria contraindicated in children with cardiopulmonary disease here ventriculo atrial shunt is contraindicated in children with cardiopulmonary disease or with elevated csf protein that is cerebrospinal fluid protein level if it is increased then also it is contraindicated here you can see the two differences this is a ventriculo peritoneal shunt this is the ventriculo atrial shunt where it is uh, you know uh, uh, 
connected to the right atrium okay so already we all know that the right atrium what will happen all the impurified all the vena cavas are entering so it will enter so it will be purified the cs will enter along with the blood and then it will, will be purified while it goes to the uh, you know uh, oxygenation and then it will be again entering the system and will be purified by the kidney and uh, you know excreted if excessive amount of cs see how it is happening this is the ventricular atrial shunt the shunt is working and the, the direction of the flow of the CFS, CSF is shown here. Okay. What are the major complications of the surgery of shunting? Either VA or VP. Shunt infection is most serious complication. Period of greater risk is 1 to 2 months. First 1 to 2 months following the placement is very serious. Staphylococcus and streptococcus infections are most common organisms which causes infection. Staphylococcus and streptococcus. Mechanical difficulties, other complications, mechanical difficulties, kinking means bending of the tube, plugging means, uh, you know, the obstacle or, you know, obstruction of the tube and migration movement, moving tube, moving from one place to another, you know, migration of the tubing. These three mechanical problems can happen because it is a tube. Malfunction is most often by mechanical obstruction, same as the plugging. Look for signs of increased in. So, whenever these mechanical difficulties, complications happen, what will happen again? Flow of the CSF will be again stopped. Then, what will again? Again, the old sign will come. So, what will happen? First sign will be increased uh, renal pressure and drop cranial pressure so it infection means it will lead to fever inflammation and abdominal pain post-operative care in addition to routine post-operative care so routine post-operative care will also be there along with that what we add is place and place the child on the unoperated side to prevent pressure on shunt valve keep the uh, uh, the what you call is the uh, uh, hob means uh, flat because the head over the body is flat you have to keep it wrapped because the uh, it uh, the head cannot be you know in a vertical position head down body head over body position means the position of the head with respect to the body should be flat otherwise what will happen again intra if the head goes down again intracranial pressure will be as it is the same like a contraindication we have for postural drainage so the head cannot go down because if the head goes down again intracranial pressure will increase and even in, in, in increasing uh, vertical increase of the level of the child also head of head also is not advised so head on over body should be flat rapid decrease in intracranial fluid may cause subdural hematoma due to small vein rupture in cerebral cortex okay so uh, so these are the reason why you are keeping the head in flat position do not pump shunt without specific direction from doctor too many different pump devices don't pump un unnecessarily and without doctor's direction if uh, uh, excessive pumping also may lead to other se severe cerebral damages too many pump devices using too many pump devices is also not advisable observe for signs of increase so main thing is to observe the for signs of increased intracranial pressure may indicate obstruction of shunt assess pupil size that is an important thing whenever there is a problem with the brain assess the pupil size as pressure on ocular motor nerve may cause dilatation on same side as the pressure blood pressure may be variable due to hypoxia to the brain stem so blood pressure will be varying because due to hypoxia to the brainstem because the respiratory centers are in the brainstem abdominal distension due to CF, CSF peritonitis or postoperative illness due to catheter placement so any infection in the abdomen due to either due to CSF peritonitis or due to normal normally occurring postoperative illness due to catheter placement monitor uh, in the INO may be on the fluid restriction or uh, NPO that is uh, you'll here the main idea is to look for the uh, the IV lines and the oxygen in the, the IV lines and the oxygen and maybe on fluid restriction any fluid restriction for the patient is given advice by the doctor or uh, you know um, uh, no, any other suggestions for 20 hours 
24 hours to prevent fluid overload so any kind of excessive flu fluid overload cannot happen so only uh, check check always check the IV lines and the oxygen and follow the whatever is the advised by the doctor monitor uh, the VS increased temperature may indicate uh, infection. So the body to monitor the uh, uh, temperature since uh, temperature is very very important. Increased temperature may indicate infection. So all this can be monitored in the uh, in the ICU monitor. Okay. Give good skin care to prevent tissue damage. So normally in any post-operative case, whatever we are doing, we are doing here also. So finally, family support because the child, if you to give, uh, if this surgery is done for ch uh, early uh, school going child and all, the child will be very much fearful. So family support the child, the, the parents' presence, and their you know comforting is very very important. Communication of the procedure to the family. Family should be very supportive with the surgeons and the whole team. So communicate properly, make the parents understand what is happening. Why, what, what is the necessity of the things which we are doing the the whole medical team is doing prepare for discharge so this is uh, the uh, we are coming to the end of the topic hydrocephalus